Hi, Richard. Hello, Hello Monica. How are you? Great. And you? Very, very well. Thank you. Happy Friday. Have you caught up with any of the events of um, this week with XR Safety or not? No, unfortunately, I, I think I shared in the group, but I managed to spill a bunch of coffee on my keyboard. So I have oh, been yes. listening. Oh, no. <laughs> Hello, Christian. I know where you are. You do. I'm just playing with my camera a second. Give me two secs. Hello, Marco. Hello. How are you doing? Yeah, great to see you in the mic club. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, welcome. <laughs> <laughs> Terrific. How's the week been going? Oh, I'm barely getting any sleep because, uh, you know, things all the time, the timeline of the, um, all the agenda of the, um, of the XR60 week is based on PST. And I'm based in Italy, so I'm mainly in i live mainly your time but in this case i work till 3 a.m every every night and it's not great for me as you can see for <laughs> you need your beauty sleep this weekend oh yeah yeah i m more than beauty sleep i really want some disconnection from pc and uh, hmd and whatever i, I need like a Tech disconnection, a deep one. I think so. Digital detox for sure. <laughs> Can you go and walk in some hills or something, Marco? Yeah, I am. Uh, I live close to the, uh, close to the, the mountains, so Wonderful. I'm very lucky. There is snow everywhere, so I will take a good. Excellent. Yeah, nice. Yes, cold this time. Yeah, for sure. Wonderful. Well, thank, thanks for joining, uh, and a few minutes early as well. I put that agenda around recently, so I'll, I'll just do a bit of scene setting. Um, and particularly our our angle on this, so where this fits into our concerns about you know the greater inequalities of the world, and then uh, Marco, as as you uh, confirmed, you know, with you, um, you know, I mean, as as you wish to use the time, really, you know, to kind of uh, speak about your own personal interests and the the organisation, um, aims, objectives, mission, vision, you know, really kind of catches up on on the work. Um, love to hear a few views as well if you have any response reflections on what I share in terms of some of the I mean it'll all be things you know about the industry but you know if you want to deeper dive into any of those that'd be great so if you know if you sort of go for sort of you know eight to twelve to kind of minutes something like that but you know we're fairly fairly chilled it's a Friday afternoon here so no point getting too uptight um more, so um Jason will have jumped in after me anyway and, and asked you to introduce yourself and then likewise with yourselves Monica and uh, Christian and then get as you wish. I mean, Monica, I know you spend a lot of time thinking this area. So, you know, pick, pick a few points that you'd like to have into the discussion today. Uh, Christian yourself, you know, no, no big pressure here, but things that are on your mind, you know, obviously you're, you spend your time in academia as well. So, you know, particularly the privacy and the um, safety and so on, but, you know, big, big uh, part of your life. And then, yeah, we'll see who's here and who wants to chat and, uh, and how, how it rolls really so sound sound okay yeah oh, that's perfect just two questions on my side if i can of course the first one is i really need to ask you uh to close the conversation at the right time just because otherwise uh, you, I you've got to go with all the rest so <laughs> i'm going to forgive, <laughs> forgive me if uh, at half hour precise i jump away um now the other thing is how much marketing oriented do you want to be the conversation because well, i'm very side. not a marketing person so the, the views <laughs> i can share on xrsi etc cetera, etc cetera, could be a bit uh, uh, political in some case uh, is it okay for Marco, you go for it okay thank you. i will apologize later if we need to uh, we, we beg forgiveness I, I, not I come permission. from the i come from international cooperation i don't come from the industry so it's like a completely different work we, we have no boss marco so we can we can get to any kind of trouble we want it's great <laughs> no, but it, it's not about trouble but you know it's not being promotional That's oh i see okay yeah well you you go for it and we'll, we'll see we'll see you know you just okay. speak from the heart as always right i mean as long as as long as we're kind and as long as we are, yeah, no, no, we're not, we're not, there, there we don't want anybody be, to be an expert, fight. right? It's not, listen to me, I know what you, know, you don't know, and I know, we just try and get away from that so that we rise together. That's always Thank the you. same. 
Um, we were in good company though, Divya's here, one of my favorite people in the world. Uh, Michaela's here too, Noble. Uh, Patty's here, Rupert's here, superstar Rupert from uh, the Python coding workshop that we hosted last night. Uh, so we thought we'd have a quiet December. Well, that didn't happen. So <laughs> never mind. Well, there's, We've got lots no of old, events. Oh, yeah. No such thing as a quiet December, Richard. There's, but there should be. <laughs> never, never ends up that way, does it? I'm also hoping for a quiet August. So I'll put that out there now to everybody in the network. I, I'd very much like to have a quiet August. So. <laughs> just impossible ryan's here your colleague that's fantastic uh by the way this is this is not a webinar uh please put your cameras on if you'd like uh you know it's it's yeah. it's all of us all of us together hey, learning. <laughs> so don't feel like hey that worked ryan nice. great to see you patty hello are you is it cold ryan oh, that looks like a terrific hoodie well, he's in Canada. Of course, it's cold. Of course. <laughs> I'll do my lip reading. It's Ryan showing us snow. We're about to see some very snowy. Yes. Patty, it's where are you? Here, but it's nice Is it? Now, so. It's not snow. Patty, where are you? Everyone's muted. <laughs> Everyone muted needs to, yeah. Need to ask everyone to unmute. Too bad. <laughs> There, now there we go. Oh, I'm you're Calgary. both <laughs> Calgary, Canada. Oh, we've got a big Canadian uh, group here then. That's fun. So how far are you from Ryan? Ryan, where are you? Uh, Nova Scotia. So oh, long way away. <laughs> almost as far away as you can get from each other. Probably, I, know, I guess, 5,000 kilometers or something like that. 3,500 yeah. miles or something. <laughs> it's hard to imagine living in a big country can i be honest i really struggle to understand what that must be like well you know, to explain it i've never been to nova scotia you know <laughs> <laughs> it's that far <laughs> you can plan a trip now visit visit ryan that's right yeah i was born in calgary though so oh were you I have, I, yeah. yes i have a connection we have a similar <laughs> snow scene outside as yeah. you do <laughs> yeah more joiners, Javier's here. Oh, Mark's here. How great to see you. Stephen's here as well. That's great. I think we'll be a, a really interesting, intimate group today. I think that will be fun. We, we haven't tried, we haven't blasted this everywhere. We just wanted a, a few interesting people to come and have this conversation today, actually. So we are very happy to see <laughs> 17 uh, people here now who just joined. Let me scan uh mariah's just joined i think i think that's the additional name we've just seen you're very welcome to put cameras on by the way all very very relaxed today no rig big we're not big on formalities at the best of times here i have to try and iron a shirt sometime and put it on but <laughs> hello so everyone's auto muted so you have to <laughs> press the button hello how are you i'm okay thank you yeah, where are you? Greetings from London. London! Yeah. <laughs> Wonderful. Jazel's in Milton Keynes, as am I. Christian's in Milton Keynes as well, so we're not too far from you. Um, down in London on Monday again, looking forward to it. Over oh, at Christian, you are in Milton Keynes as well? Yeah, so I'm in uh, MKU, so in our, our new university building in the centre of Milton Keynes. Okay. Which is Christian, put, lovely, a, lovely. put a plug in. Do a little marketing plug for MKU. Give a little plug. <laughs> Hello, I do you. Um, yeah, so MKU is a new university in Milton Keynes. So we're launching, well, we launched in September, but we're growing with degree apprenticeships for the next three to four years, um, trying to focus on digital subjects and some new and emerging topics. So we're, we're the university of the future is the aim, and we're sort of loving talking about stuff like this. And I'm responsible, for, well, I'll do the intro in a bit, but th this sort of thing is my area for chatting about, really. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Who else has arrived? Alina, you can put your cameras on if you want. Animesh, Jerry's here. Uh, Hyming's here. Don't worry about your, your hairstyle or what you're wearing. It doesn't, doesn't bother. It's just as you are. Just <laughs> Marco is obviously the smartest, so no one's going to look smarter than him. So we just stop trying. <laughs> it's a nice suit. <laughs> Hello, Michaela. 
How are you? Uh, sorry, it's a bit loud where I am, but I'm in Oxford at the moment. Are you? Wow. Yeah. Got loads of UK people. Jerry's here. Jerry's sort of, I always think Reading, but you, or where exactly are you? Oh, you're muted. Sorry, everybody. My Ooh. thing auto mutes everybody. <laughs> exactly Reading. Reading. Excellent. So, yeah. Oh, MK Oxford Reading. We're going straight down that corridor. Okay, great. Stephen, hi. Great to see you with your camera on. Uh, 20, how are you? Yeah, I'm good, thanks. Yourself? Really well, thanks. Another English <laughs> accent. <laughs> <laughs> with a, Hello, Hunter. Let's hear your accent, Hunter. See if we can guess. I'm uh, in uh, the Midwest. In the Midwest. Wonderful. You're very welcome. Um, so just relax. Camera's on. Mic's on if you want. If you're a bit noisy, I'll mute you or something if someone starts shouting in the background. But it's Friday afternoon here. Very, very chilled out, relaxed session on a very important sub subject that we, uh, MKI, and particularly at our cousins, XRSI care a lot about. So I'm going to set the scene for just a few minutes today. Our superstar moderator, Jaisal, who can handle anything, is here to keep us on track. A bunch of us are going to dash off to another XRSI event in exactly 58 minutes. So uh, we're going to have to jump at that point. So let's get the most out of this session that we can. We're talking about concerns around safety and privacy, but uh, it doesn't have to just be limited to that. As we move into a new era of technology, right, and spatial computing, we're obviously talking about the metaverse, which if you were holding any uh, mana cryptocurrency, you've quite enjoyed all the buzz around metaverse. I think that shut up about 600%, didn't it, in a week for anybody who was holding that. I wasn't, but <laughs> there we go. So exciting times. Um, Marco, did you have any mana? No. Unfortunately, yes. You uh, did? Unfortunately, because there's been like uh, a buy and sell in, in exactly the wrong moments. So. <laughs> so, it's it's no. my notorious, you know, smell for good moves financially. <laughs> You're as good as me then. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, I'm, I'm a celebrity in this field. <laughs> do you, great to do you want to, to destroy the market from the inside? Here we come. <laughs> <laughs> Plots in Decentraland, where that's the currency, are selling for multi-millions now. It's a very, very exciting space. But... It, it offers incredible opportunities around interoperability and porting of data and ownership of digital assets. And it raises a few concerns. So I'm, I'm going to share my screen for just a moment. And I'm going to just talk about some of those concerns. I, I'm not the world expert on this, of course, but we, you know, we're just looking to set the scene and have the conversation start. So let me share my PowerPoint over here. I'm going to whiz through this nice and quickly. Uh, everyone seeing the slides okay? Not yet, not yet, yes, okay, great. So honestly, this is gonna be just a fly through this presentation and I'm gonna give you some quick stats and then we can jump in here from the people who know far more than I, including many of you who've arrived today. So, so basically the reason that we're, we're so concerned is that this is massive exponential increase in data collection and processing. You can see the stat on your screen there, supported by 5G technologies. We're talking about something like a four time growth in data collection, which is already massive by the mid turn of, of the decade. Uh, 1.5 billion 5G devices, 175 zettabytes of data. I was going to ask if anybody knows what that is, but I've already given it away from my preview there. A, a trillion gigabytes. Right? <laughs> this is so much data. And I'll tell you, my, my one concern in, in one thing, if you take away one thing from this, is the more data that we're processing, the more we're going to have to rely on autonomous decision making. And autonomous decision making comes with real problems, real problems around bias and, and exclusion and so on. And that's only gone one way with this trend. So that's AR devices, VR, Oculus Quest, Apple, do you see Apple have announced? Marco might touch on that, Apple announced their headset, could be an absolute world leader in this space within this decade. Obviously all the IoT and then all the connected cars. And I'll give you an example of an Apple product, um, uh, ideation is coming through in just a moment. So call it what you want, the internet of everybody, the internet of humans, the metaverse, it's, it's all described in this incredible collection. That's that uh, data that I mentioned earlier on in terms of this volume going up so much. It's just such a steep curve. So the, the stats, so this 
I think I learned this from Caviar as well, uh, Marcus' colleague. So the thing about the Oculus Quest, and I'm not going to pick on, well, I am going to pick on Meta a little bit, but it's not particularly them. But like, this is a world away. So my my webcam in front of me, look, it's a dumb webcam, right? It's, it's high def, but it's just on. It just sits there. That's not the case with the camera in your phone, right? The camera in your phone's smart. It's analyzing where you look on the screen and the gaze. And that's what's happening with these devices. So the Oculus Quest 2, you put it on 2 million unique data points in 20 minutes of use. How? It's looking at your gaze. It's got cameras on the inside, cameras on the outside, scanning, right? Scanning, I'll, I'll, I'll jump ahead. What does that look like, right? Same thing for the AR glasses from Facebook. Look, this is what they're doing, right? They want to map the whole damn world, right? Not just them, Amazon with their doorbells, connecting all the doorbells together, mapping societies and streets, and then selling it to the highest bidder, right? This is incredible increase in data collection. So come back to the Oculus Quest 2. It, it's, it's measuring where you're looking on the screen. It's, it's measuring potentially who's in the room, what's in the room, as these things develop and even our headphones start having cameras in them, you'll open the fridge, it'll scan the brands in there. You know, who are you with? Where are you going? What are you doing? Right? Uh, they want to know everything, oh. right? <laughs> and so, uh, health data it can scan your iris. The iris tells you, tells uh, these systems a lot. Marcus so learning a lot. Uh, just, Does that mean? Yeah, I just need somebody to mute there if that's cool. Thank you so much. Uh, hey, Phil's here. Great seeing you. <laughs> Let me just make but a couple we... of codes. Okay. Okay, there we go. Uh, Jason, I make you a co-host as well. I should have done this before, I see. All good, then we can just help anybody out because we want cameras and mics on, but obviously just one at a time. So, uh, And I, I won't talk for long, I promise. But uh, so, yes, yeah, scans the iris health data, right? All going to to meta who constantly are in court because they're not very trustworthy <laughs> and, so, uh, and then your your stamina your flexibility right um your your reaction time all of these things right over time are being tracked like it, this is this is absolute backdoor into incredible amounts of health data every time you put that headset on so uh facebook uh in 2005 weren't interesting in about 2010, 11, they were worth about a revenues of about $8 billion today, $86.7 billion. And they haven't even got started yet, right? So this is just from algorithms on, on, on social posts. If they 10X again from the work they want to do with their devices in the metaverse, they will be the third largest thing in the world. China, US, Facebook, right? So this is why we get a little concerned. So, you know, there's other technologies. I'll jump around a little bit here. You've got Chorus and Gong and these kind of technologies that can record meetings and understand who's saying what and in, in, in intent. I mentioned the gaze already from devices, every device. It's not there yet, but these cameras want to try and understand our emotions. And there's that Apple um, prototype that I mentioned earlier. Some of you might have seen it. This deck's a couple of months old. You're scanning the veins to understand, uh, you know, narcotics in the system, whether you're under the influence of alcohol, all this kind of stuff. So it's it's going deep, 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 deep. The problem is, the problem is, it's it's a it's like a jigsaw that's kind of the pieces aren't right together. So, uh, quick quiz: uh, What piece of information are we getting from Michael in this screen? Somebody shout it out. What what are we what have we learned from this one snapshot of data? about Michael. Anybody, what do you see on your screen? What's a piece of information that, we, that could be commercially interesting? But like everything. Hair. Everything, yeah. <laughs> what did you say, Michaela? He has facial hair. He has facial hair, yeah. Headphones. Headphones. He's a white male around 45, 50 years old. So he has very specific demographics in uh, consuming. Sure. He loves food. He loves he food. Lives in a he, he, wood, wood, because. Oh, wood. <laughs> I was going to say, I think he's yeah. not 
<laughs> he lives in a temperate uh, area of the world because of the uh, of the cl- climate yeah yeah so so great examples the other thing that hasn't been mentioned bottom left of your screen if you can see it i mean sometimes uh, let me just move my uh, notes out of the way i haven't made this full screen just for speed okay, so we, we see the red bars from for michael right so okay so this is my point about incomplete data so you so zoom can sell that data now to bt or virgin or whatever and go you need you need to really hustle michael on facebook online to to get a better broadband provider or to upgrade his speed but hold up you know is this even his house is he on location is he on holiday is it his friend's house i mean you're just making a judgment about his broadband speed without any context and and that i think that's the issue that really worries us about all of this is like Marco and I and Jerry, whatever, we could create uh, a dating app ourselves, you know, to go and rival Bumble, right? And we'd get our $10 a month from people that use it. And that's all great. And then a year down the line, we go, wow, look at all the data we've got. We've got metadata and we've got location data and GPS data and all these kind of things. Let's sell it. So we put it out and we, we sell the data into the networks and whatever. And now some health company start using the partly our data that we produced to work on particular um, you know interventions and, and new products and services in wellness. But, but hold up, our data was just the stuff that we happened to produce as we were trying to work on a dating app. It's like our exhaust. It's, we didn't build it for these guys to be able to use it for medical interventions. We just happened to just stumble across this stuff. So we just pump it out and we just hope that we can flog it. And others then are using that same data to start powering their companies and building products. But you've got no foundations for that metaphorical building if you start building it on all this data that's just come out of all the networks uh, so much so that there was a, a group in Soweto that a company was analyzing their data from supermarket shops and visas and the visa uh, credit card bills that kind of stuff and they said this group of people doesn't buy soap and they started planning for what interventions and what products they could sell and what medicines they might need and 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 this particular group they they, they had a consortium that bought soap products and others from manufacturers on a quarterly basis so of course it didn't show up on their supermarket bills but they were well down the line this company in planning products to mitigate for the incorrect data they've got so look, that's all i want to do today to set the scene like this data collection incredible opportunities in life incredible but my god it's a mess and, and we are building skyscrapers on this metaphorical skyscrapers on this data which quite frankly is is isn't worth it's it's worth anything to start with let alone to, to build companies on it so uh hopefully that's uh just a few uh thoughts <laughs> to get this conversation going jason to you to introduce uh three people who have come to kind of spend a bit of time with us and then we'll Absolutely. jump in right I think you have set the scene so well. I think in this 10 minute, minutes time, it's it's worth a million words, probably 175 zettabytes of data. <laughs> I would say because it's, it's, it's really wonderful the way our data is getting used and the context is being formed out of it and used by the various devices. So I think let us go to our speakers who would add more insight to this. So I would be starting uh, to introduce or call them to you know introduce themselves and then we'll move on one by one so that they can add their insights to this so uh marco would you like to introduce yourself uh to the crowd i think they're really looking forward to this okay thank you thank you Giselle. uh so um, no i i don't like to introduce myself simply because uh, no i i really hate to uh, to talk about myself but clearly let's uh, let's start so uh, well, first of all, I am one of the co-founders and director of communication at the uh, XR Safety Initiative or XRSI. XR Safety Initiative, and we will talk a little bit more about this yes. maybe later, I was born in uh, 2019, uh, more or less the same days when uh, the first Oculus Quest was uh, launched on the market. It, it was like one week later or one week before now i, I can't remember the exact date um of of the launch of uh, oculus quest but we were created in 30th of april of 2019 
And since then, we have been working on various fields, but uh, a little bit about myself, because I don't come from the tech industry and I don't come, as you can hear from my Italian accent, from uh, uh, San Francisco, like the other founders. Uh, I come from Italy and uh, I'm a journalist who specializes in foreign policy, in particular with a focus on Middle East. I've been covering the Syrian war crisis since it erupted. I've been, I've been in Syria in the recent years. I've been in Lebanon, in Jordan, in, uh, in Turkish Kurdistan. Uh, and at the same time, I've been covering the migration crisis, but I am an old nerd. What, what, what does it mean? Uh, I've always been a very crazy person for technology. Uh, I am the, the first PC in my house arrived in 1989, so I was four, and we had to build it, we have to construct it, we have to start understanding how a PC from 1989 without a graphical interface would work. So that was a, a bit of a, a bit of a challenge. And so in 2001, I was 16. Uh, so at the beginning of high school, uh, the internet entered in our area, arrived here. We, we, we were internetless for the whole nineties. Okay. And I discovered some interesting uh, media, independent media projects, such as Indie Media. I don't know if anyone uh, remind, remembers Indie Media. It was one of the most ambitious projects of counter information at the time, way before counter information was alternative facts. The, there was nothing of it. It was a tentative of uh, building ground up. And so at the time, there was a big concern about surveillance in terms of cameras or GPS, et cetera, et cetera. And if you compare the quality and quantity of data from 2001 to the quantity of quali and quality of data we have today in our pockets, wow, that's stunning because uh, there is such a, such a big uh, difference, uh, which is almost impossible to conceive in uh, human terms. And so when, uh, when, XR, uh, when XR started to become something more popular, something going closer to the mass adoption, well, it was like one plus one. Okay, we need to be there. We need to start understanding more and understanding and addressing. So research and public communication are our two main pillars. And in, in September, 2021, so this is very fresh, we also decided to expand, and I, I am the founder of XRSI Europe, together with some person who's joining us today, such as Alina Kadlubski, who is in the, in the call. And we are very excited to start uh, moving in this direction. And, you know, crossing Atlantic is one of the most important things, especially because uh, in, the, in the US, market is very ready, but regulations are not. On the other side, in Europe, we have a lot of interesting works on regulation, but maybe it's a bit early for the market. So it's better to be here on time. Thanks, Marco, so much. I think your interest in technology just has proven where you have come to the future of technology now, where XR is entirely about AR, VR, MR, all the technologies that we are talking, some we are seeing in the market, some we even don't know is going on in, in the background and we are going to see it and our data is already being processed for it. Moving on to Monica, can you introduce yourself? Hello. Hello, Giselle. Hello, everyone. So uh, I'm Monica Manova. I'm from Bulgaria. I'm a PhD in geographic information systems. So I'm mostly interested in the technological side of things. I'm uh, very happy to have been able to participate in the development of some of the standards for the XRSI framework for uh, safety version two, which we did last year with my colleagues and friends from MKI. And um, what, what interested me in the beginning uh, in the framework was that initially I was thinking that due to the fact that I am geographic information systems expert and we are mostly focused on happenings in the real world in, in the interconnectivity between events that are in the physical space, 
I was wondering whether um, XR will be something that is applicable for me, whether I would be able to be of use to that research, whether I will be able to discover some interesting aspects of it that relate to my fields of study and my fields of interest. And uh, I was interested to see that, in fact, when it comes down to geographic information systems and extended realities, there is a lot of cross sections and a lot of connections there. In, and uh, also that's the same for artificial intelligence and machine learning. And uh, there is a deep area of connectivity there, which is standing outside of the coverage of regulation that is coming out right now within the European Union. And there are also areas there that are deeply and profoundly interesting, not only for the ways in which we are as human beings in the digital age, but also in the way in which we interact with our environments and the ways in which we perceive the world. As you probably know, due to the fact that um, the COVID pandemic walked us around the world last year, we have been able to communicate uh, via digital means more fastly and to connect with each other in all sorts of different ways that weren't available before. And I think that that has significantly accelerated the capacity of XR technology across the world. And that is true for all different types of geographies uh, out, out there. And I don't actually agree with what Richard has said earlier in his presentation, but maybe uh, I'll have a bit more time to tell you more about it after Giselle has introduced herself because her introduction is next. So I'm going to leave it over for Giselle to introduce herself. And then I can tell you all the reasons why I'm not particularly agreeing with Richard about all this data that is being gathered that to him seems worthless, but to someone who is interested in this stuff might come as a very, very important resource for information. So over to you, Giselle. Thanks. Thanks so much, Monica, for your introduction and definitely the XRSI framework and the thought process that it brought us together has made a lot of difference. And I, I hope we can do something more together. Now, moving on to Christian. Christian, can you please introduce yourself? Yeah. So hi, everyone. I'm Christian Mackey. I am the Innovation Hub Manager at MKU. So uh, MKU is a new university launching in Milton Keynes over the next sort of three to four years. We have our first students started about three months ago. We are pushing to be a modern university. So we're focusing on digital skills, data science, cybersecurity. We're looking at modern subjects and particularly from a sense of innovation about how we innovate in education. So a lot of my interest in XR is about how that relates to teaching, how we can look at bringing that into classrooms, how we can look at some of the implications of doing that, and actually the discussions around security that come along with that, like one of the things we're dealing with on a day-to-day -day basis around all sort of new innovative technologies. So really keen to sort of look at what's happening, what the new options out there, and actually how we can fit that into systems that are expandable as well, and particularly in the educational sector. So sort of, we can't neglect anyone really. And there's some great opportunities there and there's some great risks. So looking forward to this chat and yeah, be really interested to see what everyone else has to say. Thanks. Thanks so much, Christian. I think you have raised a very important point and bringing about, uh, you know, what is there in the future and especially education is the one which is going to get impacted the most because it's the future world, isn't it? So we need to see potentially what are the risks, but also the opportunities. And with the experts in this forum, we will be able to find that out in a short time of a short span of time, I'm sure. Uh, moving on back to Marco. Uh, Marco, uh, as a part of XRSI, and uh, this is the week for the safety, XRSI safety week, which we are, you know, promoting. And uh, we want to understand how this entire technology, you know, what is the mission that XRSI safety is having? And what, what is the baseline for it? What is the thought process? Everything people would want to know about it and why we are looking for the safety. If I may just uh, make a, a step back, uh, Jaisal. Yeah. Uh, I'm really, be, th then we will, we will get to this because thank you for the question, but I'm really interested in uh, hearing what uh, Monica has to say about uh, about the introduction of, uh, of Richard. I think this can set some ground here. So 
if if you excuse me definitely. i would really like to hear that yes yes we can definitely because this is a a, a free flowing event a discussion where we want to hear people and uh, i hope richard you're okay i'm going to go to ask monica what does she think about it okay thank you thank you marco so um yeah um richard just showed us a picture of someone who is talking on their zoom camera and um there is a word that can be derived from that picture from the machine learning sense like um, the the place where that person is at uh, his age his uh, potentially um his social sta status his interests and that is only in the 2D world that we are currently living in. When it comes down to um, extended realities, that world is going to be much more expanded for us. It's going to be a, an entire 3D world where we will be existing uh, along with other people, along with our closest connections, our colleagues, our relatives, and then some people that we are just beginning to know. And we are already getting all of this data that is coming out of machine learning algorithms across uh, social media, across all these different networks that are connecting us. And that is going to become much more intense with the introduction of ocular technology. The glasses that I'm wearing, wearing currently are just simple glasses, but when I put on the ocular technology, it is going to be able to classify the people that I'm communicating with based on how many of them are I'm communicating with, how often in the day, how interested I'm in, the, in, in them. It's going to be able to recognize the types of people that I'm communicating with based on their age, their social standing, uh, where they're, um, where they're uh, located in the world. It's going to add on to my impressions and it's going to be able to classify the people that I'm mostly interested in and the people that I'm not that interested in. And it's going to, put me in this silo of information that is very personal, very near and dear to me. And now that technology is going to know all this stuff about me that I couldn't have even thought about. And I like to use this example about how I knew that I was an introvert, which is a very interesting example. Like I would like for every single one of you to, to test this out at home. There is uh, natural language processing within artificial intelligence. It's one of the uh, the, the spheres of artificial intelligence, which is very, uh, which is growing very steadily, very, uh, very quickly. And how I found out that I'm an introvert is by putting some of my postings in social media within one of these engines. So imagine what happens when you have all these data points gathering information about you that is being unfiltered, unfiltered currently, that uh, you're choosing to provide to this device because let's face it, we already have some regulations around data, but nobody is looking at the fine print anymore. It's just something that comes along with the service and we are agreeing to it constantly, daily, under uh, all the services that we are using. We are agreeing to uh, companies taking all this data for us because it's just another thing in our day that just happens and we click the, the agreements and that is going to happen when you have these soccer wars everywhere, because it's going, they're going to be connected with us and they're going to be connected to, to such an extent with our daily existence that uh, it will just be something that everyone else is doing. So when everyone else is doing it, why not do it ourselves? We agree to this stuff and these devices connect with us. They connect with our social cycles, circles, they connect with our interests and they gather all of these data that could be utilized in all sorts of different ways. So what is what the Oculus are going to know about me that I already uh, have discovered via putting all my posts in social media that probably some of the social media companies knew about me before I knew them about myself, that I'm an introvert. What other stuff are the Oculus going to know about me? Like what types of, apart from the usual services that I'm using in geographic information systems, there is uh, topo topological services, like the places where I'm going, like my spatial information. But apart from that, what I'm looking at, like what are these elements of my day that I'm constantly looking at and how they capture my, my attention. And that is going to become a sort of an important element of this brand new type of economics that we're going to have. Imagine advertisements that are already utilizing a sense-making sense experience, like when you're purchasing, when you're looking at an advertisement for chocolate and it, all the colors are just sharp and integrated and 
you, you even get hungry when you look at it right now. Imagine having all that all over the place around you, like a constant sense-making economics that exists in your world and that is knitted throughout your entire day with these software technologies that we're going to be using. And that is only a single thing that is uh, just the surface level of what's going to happen when we have when we have these oculus deployed. And that's going to happen. Like we are moving towards that. After the announcement for the metaverse, I read a bunch of articles and they're already working on gloves and they're already working on these even better glasses that are going to be 4K and that are going to be even more advanced. So all of that is going to happen very shortly. So we cannot just think that the data that is being gathered is not going to be utilized. It is going to be utilized and some of it may be garbage, but some of it may say to the company that is using it that, hey, this person is an ex introvert, this person is an extrovert, this person is more likely to, I don't know. It's, it's going to be able to predict what you're going to be doing throughout your day. Please, um, uh, Christian or uh, Adam. Monica, just Monica, Monica, Monica. Yeah. Monica? Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Yeah. Yes, you are a very fluent speaker. Thank you. Thank you. And um, very expressive. And um, uh, my, my uh, work is uh, in the area of drama, uh, education in schools, um, getting kids to um, look at difficult subjects, such as originally HIV, and alcoholism and various other topics which um, concern all of us um, today. Um, so my, 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 my interest in this is how one would take this extraordinary technology and use it in such a way as it was um, an immediate interaction in a dramatic sense. In other words, we can talk about technology. The interesting thing about the first image that was on the screen, uh, the chap with the beard, rather like mine, and staring, was that we looked at the, um, there were comments about the, what he was wearing and so on. But what I found really fascinating about that image was the eyes. Uh, the, the, the technology uh, to, to um, find out what's going on in the brain through the eyes is a very fascinating area because uh, this tells you so much about what is happening. But this is also a kind of expression of drama as well, in, in the sense that it's when we interact and play out roles, we can actually... Um, tackle very difficult subjects and come to very interesting conclusions, particularly when we have a group, uh, as we have now. Um, well, that's my introduction, really, basically, <laughs> to you. Thank you. Thank you, William. That was uh, an excellent introduction. And, and I'm, very happy. Mm. I'm very happy to hear <laughs> that I may have a future in uh, drama and theater. That's, yeah. that's what yeah. people know. Yeah, uh, thank you so much for that. Uh, yes, I, I completely understand what you mean with um, with the different sub substances. In fact, there is some research that um, shows that XR has been used uh, to scare people away from substances, to put them in situations where um, using different substances has um, affected them in, in, in sort of way. So that sort of research is out there. We probably have some information on that within MKI as well. So perhaps Jason can share some of that with you after after this event if you're interested and if it is helpful for your school schoolwork. And I also think that for kids, um, this technology is going to be fundamental. Uh, just what Marco shared earlier about the changes that we have seen in a single generation. I didn't have uh, that uh, connection to computers when I was in high school. But uh, for, for kids today that are growing up with this stuff, it's fundamental for, for their experience. Their entire social, so, social circle is happening within these apps. And I don't know whether you've seen it, like um, this uh, difficult, very difficult movie, uh, 13 Reasons Why, 
about it's it's about bullying and about this social structure that is happening. What's it called so again? It, 13 reasons why. Uh, it's a very very difficult tough um, tough topic. It's I think it's on Netflix, and oh, um, okay. it's 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 very difficult. Uh, yeah. Thank you, Patty. So it's it's very difficult topic, and it's very important for kids today to just get acquainted with all this technology and to realize that the ways in which it is affecting them uh, sometimes can be can be uh, can uh, sometimes can cause um, difficulties, can cause some side effects that are unpleasant. Perhaps Mark, you can tell you more about it. So I, I think yes. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Moving on to Christian, because Christian has raised his hand and he is one of our guest speakers. Mm. Uh, can you add the points that you wanted to add uh, once Monica uh, uh, added so many insights that XR technology could do to us? Personality identification, finding context, finding our finance status, etc. There are so many things that can be identified because there are cameras, as we know, and it is capturing other social media data as well to link to it. So, Christian, what would you like to add on top of that? Just, just a really sort of sort of quick point and a bit of an anecdote, really. But um, I think Monica, your points are incredible, and that you know there's amazing stuff we can do, and it's really good to think about using that data. The thing that we always find in education and um, is actually about consent of other people. And the big thing that VR has done is very good at taking your data, and you're more you know you're happy to consent to that, but. If you're working in something that has outward facing cameras and outward facing microphones, one of the questions we come to a, a lot and a horrible example of uh, my grandma is a woman that still cuts up her address labels when she puts them in the bin. Um, so she doesn't, no one can know her address. And if she walks in the room while I have a VR headset on, we are capturing her data as well. And actually one of the big questions that we find in a lot of education is where young people don't have the rights to give away their data. They don't have a way to give away that information how when we're looking at vr safety how do we know that these people can give consent and that's one of the big questions that i think we need to face as a society a bit about is it an all or nothing mentality on data that everyone is just able to be collected or is there a way in which we have to think about how consent is given but that was just a sort of quick analysis point that i think is is worth discussing in this in this realm Absolutely. how do you manage to find out how it how it's used how 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 can we define or how can we govern or, or perhaps governs a very well uh, how can we um, uh, get to grips with how that information is used because generally information is not a bad thing but it depends on how it's used and and who uses it and who holds it I, I think uh, uh, William, we will be covering the safety points and risks because Marco is going to talk about their mission, why okay. they have been involved into uh, this work, because there are these risks which Mon Monica has identified and uh, lots of others under MKA. I have worked on the framework and uh, what Christian has identified is about the social circle identification and especially of children and yeah. uh, uh, people who are underage and they haven't given the consent and how the XR technology can capture all this information and how the consent can be given. But I think all these risks and what safety can be built, Marco is going to uh, talk about it because that's their mission that they are working on so that the right uh, regulations come in place. Uh, I would uh, move on to Edan. Edan, uh, would you like to ask your uh, question or share your views? And then I'll move on to Maria. Yes, thank you. And I really enjoy the great diversity of perspectives. I think that is important for issues like this. I come at it from law and policy. I've been doing um, uh, academia advocacy for, for a long time. And these issues that we're talking about have been around in regards to big data. Uh, I remember doing, I think, particularly interesting, the geographic location, uh, a rulemaking on toll booths and the impact it might have on domestic violence and divorce uh you know um uh 20 20 21 years ago for example but um one thing that i find intriguing and you're saying that this will come next is the framing within safety right so we've had all these issues things about the collection and consent uh very important issues and there are people trying to work on that um but i think the combination of the cyber physical context 
as people talk about it, has certain aspects uh, of safety. And again, you're saying that we'll go more into the risks. I'm very intrigued by the new and unique things that come about through XR um, that have to do with what are those risks where information is combined with physical reality. And I worked on, um, for example, uh, industrial internet of things protocol with the World Economic Forum where I was recently working. And uh, it was interesting to, you know, um, take all of the data knowledge related risks and distinguish them from in a manufacturing context, what happens if you know, the machines uh, 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 mess up and someone gets actually physically harmed. Um, and so uh, I am very much enjoying this. And I think um, uh, I'm most intrigued by those risks that we can describe as um, uh, unique to that cyber physical context. Thanks. Thanks, thanks, Ed, and I think uh, this is the kind of work which I, I think uh, we cannot cover everything in this call, but definitely when Marco uh, covers their mission, he would talk about this, you know, the neural interfaces where they are combining the data with the physical devices itself. This is the kind of uh, reality or the mixed reality that we are talking about that could harness your data with the physical devices, in fact. So uh, yes, uh, that that is also getting analyzed and the risks associated uh, with it uh, by XRSI. Uh, uh, moving on to Maria. Maria, would you like to add anything before I move on to Marco to talk about the XR Safety Week and uh, the mission? Um, yes, I just want to... But... Uh, and that I've noticed a few important things, especially between Monica and Richard, uh, when it started the con conversation, that um, as long as I understand Monica, she thinks that um, collecting and using information is um, beneficial for progress um, in technology and uh, new um, uh, new products and new services to uh, benefit um, human beings. And um, I understand that Richard, he uh, probably like me, uh, has some um, thoughts about how the information is collected and is not only about giving or not giving consent, but um, if the information when it's collected and used, is it beneficial for a certain group of people? Is it beneficial for a certain organization or for humanity um, as, as, as a, as a, uh, as the, the most um, progressive at the moment um, pain <laughs> on our planet? And if, if um, um, by, uh, collecting and using information, we are uh, uh, trying to, um, to protect each and every human being on our planet, as well as um, any other living creatures and life on the planet and the planet as, a, as a, our home, or um, there is some other intentions of collecting and using information uh, and um, and um, uh, is, it, is it going to be some kind of a problem? Uh, and there are so many organizations who are um, with um, humanitarian and other um, charities uh, that are protecting um, uh, so many causes and, um, and it doesn't uh, mean that they, they should be excluded from collecting and uh, using information in, in, in the way that that is uh, becoming uh, a, a normality. Thanks, thanks, Maria, for adding that. Yes, for the uh, advancement of technology, uh, data collection is needed. But how safely it is being done, how people are getting educated about it, and what are the regulations, transparency, trust, fairness that is brought around it is the key. And that's the reason identification of risks 
and then involving the diverse crowds into this is the key which is going to work for our future. And that is what I think, Marco, can you add your insights onto it? Uh, you know, how this mission of yours is going to help bring about this into this future world of XR. All right, first of all, thank you everyone for all the great insights that you, have, you offered because th there is a lot to build on. I tried to take notes. I filled for for sheets and uh, okay. Now clearly we will not. Yeah, I, I'm 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 so old that I'm using pencil and sheets. But apart from this, um, we will not be able to cover everything in these 14 remaining minutes. But let's try to make a strong conversation. I would start from a slide that uh, Richard showed in the at the beginning when he was talking about the two million data points. Because that slide, not that slide, but that issue is one of the interesting starting points of our whole mission. We, we need to take a quick step, uh, jump back to 2016. So a few months before Cambridge Analytica scandal emerged. Okay, so we were at uh, Iowa, I wasn't there, but uh, uh, at Iowa caucus, Republican Iowa caucus, Alexander Nix, the former CEO of uh, Cambridge Analytica, uh, started talking about how, what, what, how could he subdivide data taken from Facebook APIs. And he said, okay, we, for, for each user, for each interaction, we can count 5,000 data points. Okay, so that was the amount of data and the starting point for building all that if you think in very scenic terms, amazing electoral campaign, if, if you think about the use they made of the data, clearly it was illegal and it's been a threat to democracy for a long time. But apart from that, that use showed that uh, 5,000 data points could be enough to strongly, strongly orient one of the most important economic powers in the world, okay? Now, fast forward to 2019, Stanford University wanted to conduct an experiment in order to understand if the same kind of interaction you have on a flat reality social network could foster the same number of data points in VR. And that's where the, the 2 million data points um, information emerged. But here's the point. Data is not information. So data uh, data are is the bricks of the building we call information. And the kind of data, the number of data, the the subdivision we used bring us to having information. This is important because we need to stop a little before what Monica was talking about. Because M Monica, you were already talking about, well, quite refined information in a way is not raw data because when it comes to xr technologies we miss a point we, we need to understand something before getting to the information and this before is the data cycle the data life cycle uh, so what kind of data is harvested what kind of data is stored which data is transmitted shared archived and then processed, and finally destroyed. So that's why the first mission of XRSI in 2019 was to start building a data classification framework. Uh, there is a long way to go to get there, but I think the, it, this will give, give so much added value to the whole industry because the idea is try to mapping what happens when you put the headset on or you put your smart glasses on and what goes where. Um, so in 2019, we started with this ambitious idea and we understood that we needed something before that. So first thing we did was build a common taxonomy because in 2019, XR was not so common uh, like it is now. There were people talking about AR slash VR, AR VR, like you know, a single word, MR, that's a um, uh, commercial term by Microsoft to determine mixed reality, and so on and so on and so on. Uh, and now there is the M word, the metaverse. So um, the, the, the domain needed 
a common taxonomy. And then we started with the XR privacy and safety framework. And that's where we crossed our path with the MKAI. In order to build some good guidelines uh, for with starting to approach to, to this world. But the data classification effort is still here. And that's why in um, two hours and a half, we are going to kick off a new phase, the data classification roundtable that is happening at SR Safety Week is exactly to restart this effort, uh, this time with actual data to, to analyze. So whoever is interested, we will, um, we will keep you updated on XR Safety Week or on XRSI.org uh, regarding this. Um, but the, the, the other point is what we can do with, uh, with this kind of, uh, of, of data that, that is collected, stored, used, and so on. Because on one side, there is the personal information, the PII, uh, that are a big and quite regulated domain, especially quite regulated when it comes to Europe. But there are a lot of other information, a lot of other data that are, that are the non-PII that usually are a bit more lax in terms of regulations, but they are very used for many different kinds of targeting, such as nano-targeting or flock. Uh, I don't know how, how familiar are you with, with Flock. This is this um, alternative tracking that uh, Google Chrome uh, popped out. Uh, what was it? Five, six months ago? Five months ago? I can't exactly remember the date right now. And then there is a special category that we called um, BID, Biometrically Inferred Data. And this is very specific of uh, the XR domain. So if you take some information here, information there. For instance, we, we don't even need, Richard, you were talking about uh, the iris tracking. We don't even need that in many cases because we already have a lot of valuable information, especially even with Oculus Quest. Oculus Quest does not track your retina, okay? We don't know uh, many informations about your health looking at your, at your retina, but we can, uh, infer many of these, for instance, from your gaze, the way you are moving in the room, the way you are standing up or not standing up so well, or are you asymmetrical? Yeah, maybe you're asymmetrical. This is a very interesting information. And this brings us to, I think, the most delicate field of all, which is medical XR and healthcare. It's a, it's a pity that... Um, Ryan, uh, Ryan went away uh, from this conversation, Ryan Cameron, because he's leading our medical framework. So it would have been great to have him here. But yeah, as you see, I occupied 10 minutes just to scratch barely the surface of everything. And I'd really like to not occupy the whole time and reopening the discussion because I just gave a very small frame my suggestion for you all, if you're interested in digging deeper, is going to xrsi.org and then branching toward the field of your interest. And XR Safety Week, just to very quickly cover, cover this, was created exactly for this reason. So covering the wideness, the broadness of the, um, of the um, uh, challenges we have in front. And... Uh, Okay, the official definition of XR Safety Week is to offer a place to explore the challenging of XR, okay? Another aspect I really care about is to try to open this world to the non-specialists. So I, I come from a, an outer world compared to the, to the one many of you are. And so the idea is let's try to make these different words meet because otherwise we will keep talking around us and saying, Okay, these are very important challenges, but everyone outside will not be aware of this. And this is very much the case for XR, because if you look at the uh, general purpose press, even good quality general purpose press, I'm thinking about The Guardian, for instance, one of the best newspapers in the, in the world. And when it comes to XR, many times they talk about, oh, look, there is this new, this new device. Oh, 
interesting and it has uh, many very beautiful games and social experiences. Okay, and then and then nothing because the the mass market is not so much interested in one in what we are talking about. So the idea of XR Safety Week is let's make words uh, mix meet, and then at that point um, at that point trying to trying to bring in the other words the challenges we are trying to to face i see there are many questions so please go on yeah marco there's one particular question because we have the round table is there any report that is going to be published about that uh there's a question of about that one yeah the, the answer is definitely yes the point is that um i cannot give you a precise timeline simply because uh, all the time, the, all the um, roundtable is under a very, a very, um, how could I say, protective data management agreement. So um, we will need to double, triple check everything with all the participants before publishing anything. But yeah, that will be the starting point for a framework. So this will be a, the starting point for a publication. Absolutely. Thanks. Thanks so much uh, for. Uh, adding all those insights and I hope people do understand that we are already looking at how to protect, identify the risks, take a step back and then protect the people, the environment, etc. from these technologies and the data collection that is already happening. Uh, and uh, uh, Monica and uh, Christian, would you like to add last points before we, we just have two minutes on the row and there will be one minute for, uh, I think, a, a few seconds for uh, Richard to close as well. Monica, over to you. Do you want to add anything uh, before yeah. the closure? Yes, uh, thank you. Thank you all for this wonderful discussion. I think we, we have only just scratched the surface. So if you want to exchange with us, uh, Richard can connect you to the MTI community where I'm at and you can exchange with me as well. And I'm going to leave the floor to Christian who has been a great gentleman and left us all to blab around. So Christian, last word is yours. Yes. Uh, well, wonderful. Thank you. Uh, yeah, thank you for this. As as, as Mike said, we are scratching the surface. There's a lot to discuss. There's a lot of other things we could bring into this, and there's a lot of things to think about. But it's a very exciting conversation. And as yeah, if anyone wants to add me on LinkedIn, you're more than welcome and happy to have this chat because I think there is a lot more we can talk about and very exciting. But Richard's got the last, the proper last word. It's his his day, his event. If I may just add something, uh, just a self correction because. Uh... I said that the, the, the round table was going to start in two hours and uh, and such. No, uh, I was wrong. I, I was I was just misreading because I'm a bit uh, sleep deprived. Um, and um, no, it's it started uh, 29 minutes ago. So yes. this effort will go out until um, 9 p.m. my time or 12 p.m. PST, and. Um, at that point, uh, uh, we will move to a um, uh, to an event together with EFF and uh, Access Now, dedicated to the day we are living in, so the Human Rights Day. And uh, if you want to join, there is at uh, 3 p.m. PST, meaning 11 p.m. GMT, or midnight my time, a virtual citizen forum. In that place, we will take some of the discussions uh, away from the round table to bring them to you. So that could be an interesting point to continue this conversation. Thank you. Thank you so much. And uh, within a few seconds, Richard, if you could summarize, we are spot on. In, in minus 20 seconds, <laughs> I've just put the links in there. I know I'm, I probably shouldn't be sharing the direct Zoom link, but I think we're in a trusted group here. So I've gone ahead and done that and I'll beg forgiveness later on. We're 30 minutes late for that session, but we're all late. So we might as well jump in together and go and explore it. Uh, fashion relates, perhaps. So I will just echo my thanks. Uh, the, the week's coming to a close, but the link is in there for XR Safety Week as well. Look, reach out directly to Marco or, or XRSI or Caviar. They'll be happy to hear from you. Look, we, we're their partner for AI and data, right? So that's the areas that we want to supplement and complement their work. Um, you've got Jaisal's email address on there, nice and easy, jaisal at mki.org. She's recently appointed head of XR safety here at MKAI. So speak to her. We're going to have a whole program of planned events and, and work for 2022. 
you know, even if you just have a look at one little thing with us, then you know, we'd be glad of your company. Don't feel any great pressure, but do certainly feel very welcome to get in touch and get involved. I will thank again, Monica, thank you so much for your contributions. I thank uh, the pop-up speakers that we had as well, um, who, who joined us and contributed some views. I thank Christian as well, very much from MKU for being here and of course a, a huge debt of gratitude for Marco for not only spending some time with us but choosing our event over the other event which is incredible so thank you so much Marco and of course to Jason as well for moderating I'm one minute over LinkedIn for me there's only one Richard Foster Fletcher so I have to behave myself so just um, <laughs> search me up on LinkedIn and I, you, you won't miss me I promise and I'll, I'll accept the coming. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much Richard. Right. i'll really see awesome. anybody over the other side really oh. yes please have see a great you friday have a great bye. weekend bye. right bye everyone thank you thank, thank you. you bye thank all you the best so much bye. thank you for joining us thank you bye folks bye 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 great seeing you bye <laughs>